I got my hands on Revo Point's new range 3D scanner and decided to have some fun with it. This was an adventure I'll never forget. Space Marines are between seven and eight feet tall. I am not. When I was younger and even now, if I'm gonna be honest with you, I always look at my Space Marines as little me's protecting Terra and humanity from the grim dark future. When Revo Point asked me if I would like to try out the range 3D scanner for a video, I just couldn't say no. The endless possibilities of 3D printing could be made even better with higher quality scanners. I'm sure if you're like me, you've seen videos of people using an iPhone app to scan their head and put it on a space ring. But while it's a good introduction into scanning, I would think that a dedicated scanner would do better. So I'm bringing you along my journey with me. When the boxes came, I was a bit apprehensive, like, what on earth is inside this big box? Well, it turns out it's a huge turntable capable of holding 200 kilograms of weight. The scanner itself is very lightweight and comes with a few different attachments for the bottom like this tripod. Let's get scanning my ugly mug and turn a childhood dream into reality. I set up the scanner and stood on the turntable and let it do its thing. After I finished turning like a rotisserie chicken, it was time to check how well the scanner worked. The detail this has managed to catch is very impressive. Now I'll have to see if there is much cleanup needed before I can print it. When I was using the scanner, I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna use it for. Space Marine 2 is coming out soon and Captain, well, Lieutenant Titus is the main character. I spent so many hours when I was younger playing the first Space Marine game. Even though I'm a chaos lover through and through, it was still a great game. I first thought about ripping the head off this Chaos Marine Choi toy, but it was a Christmas present from the wife, so I don't think that would be the smartest idea. So why not just 3D print a huge Marine and use Titus as the base with my big head stuck on top? I got this Titus model from Cults, and upscaled it by 300%. Unfortunately, when you upscale or downscale a model, the pre-supports won't work unless it was saved as a Lychee file. So I had to support it myself, which with Lychee's magic button and island detection didn't take long at all. But before I press slice, I realized something. I like Space Marines, but I like Chaos more. So it's time to take some inspiration from the dark gods and digitally kit bash this model so it really represents me. I want this model to show a marine that has been corrupted by chaos. They used to spend ridiculous amounts of money in a gaming store selling plastic crack and have been tainted by an easily accessible hobby tool like a 3D printer that makes collecting their models a lot cheaper. Is that too specific? Death Guard were the first models I started to collect on my return to the hobby. I have quite a lot of files hoarded away, but I needed help from my brothers to locate some of these pieces. So I asked my Patreons in the private Discord if they knew the best places to get these pieces. If you want to join in the community, then please consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. It's quite possibly the best Discord in the universe. While I waited for the hive mind to respond, I checked some of my files that I knew would work. There is a model from Tainted Windmill that's like an APC tank used by six Space Marines that have been blessed by Nurgle. In fact, I can use a lot of these parts from this tank. I'm going to use Microsoft's 3D Builder to kitbash this model, but you could use Blender or Mesh Mixer, which reminds me, I really need to get back to learning Blender again. Okay, so this is admittedly my first time digital kitbashing. I've seen loads of great kitbashes from the Patreon community in the Discord, and I'll be honest, brothers, you inspired me for this video. The head is too clean for a corrupted model like this, and also, it feels too thin to have my head on a mini. I almost feel like Fulgrim will claim my soul for Slanesh if I don't corrupt it. I really like the Nurgle inspired models from Adam and Arsenal and took some tentacles and different gross stuff from them and made it fit with my head. Before supporting the model, I realized I almost made a critical error last time that I supported this model. I didn't hollow it. So it would have used a heck of a lot of resin and would have caused a lot of suction force. So after hollowing and supporting the model, it's now time to print.
several hours later and it's complete. A three minute wash in some methylated spirits in my machine and trying and curing it in the wash and cure system. And now it's time to paint. Having the model in hand, I can really see the details and wow, does it feel so cool to have something that I've customized a lot. As this is a Smurf that's been corrupted, I'm still gonna paint it in the classic blue, but I'm gonna make this really grimy. I airbrushed on some magic blue onto all the armor pieces. This is where I started to experiment and now I sort of regret doing it because it's beyond my skill level. I used Hive Tweller Purple for the tentacles and on the face, I let it stain the skin thinking I could use it as a base layer with some malignant green to make the skin look like it was blessed by Nurgle. Except I then decided to completely change the plan and used oil paints on the face and well, I'm not happy with it. I need to work on my face painting skills because I just can't seem to paint how I see the face in my head. I used the same pink and magenta purple oil paints to highlight the tentacles and at least make them look decent. After this video is complete, I'm going to spend some time painting faces every day to try and get better. If anyone has any tips, please let me know in the comments below. I sprayed some matte varnish over the model before applying streaking grime to all of the armor parts to get it nice and grimy like Nurgle wants. I then followed it up with some panel lining with a black brown oil wash, heavily diluted. Before I show you the final results, I'll give my feedback on the scanner. The range scanner, like I said earlier, has a minimum scanning area of 50 by 50 by 50 millimeters. It is not recommended to use the range to scan 28 millimeter models. The scan model may not be very fine, but if you want to scan the model of small objects like Warhammer models, it is recommended to use the Revo Point Mini. Overall, I think it's a great scanner and I know I'll end up finding uses for it around the house or in my personal life. The Kickstarter is getting close to the end, so if you're interested in it, then I'll leave the link in the description below. But here is the final result. Some things I've took away from this video is that I need to learn a bit more about Blender as apparently I could have cleaned up the face more before printing it and it might have helped a bit more with the digital kit bashing. But overall, I'm happy with my first attempt at scanning and kit bashing and will probably do more of the same off camera to hone my skills. What do you think of my first digital kit bash? Let me know in the comments below. If you're looking for more reasons to 3D print models, then you should watch this video next because with the help of a Patreon, I 3D printed the most unique kill team box that puts chi dubs to shame. As always, I wanna give a huge thanks to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys rock, without you, none of this is possible. I'll chat to you all in the Discord.